Hey guys, this is Doug with Honest Science, and this video is going to be about 3D printing molecules. Assuming you have the printer and whatever software you use, I'm going to show you the procedure for making the appropriate files from uh, molecular coordinates. So first you're going to need some kind of molecular geometry file, like an XYZ or a PDB. So I'm just going to grab one from the internet. So this is a great resource. It's the Computational Chemistry Comparison and Benchmark Database. So there's a bunch of free experimental and computational data that you can get. You can go to Experimental Geometry and Experimental Geometries and run a search for your molecule. Normally you use the, the uh, chemical notation, but you can type in butane like I just did there. So there's a bunch of good information, but the thing you want is the calculated geometries there at the bottom. And there's a bunch of data from different basis sets and levels of theory, but one of the best is the coupled cluster, which is this yellow one. And I'll just use a simple basis set, uh, 6, 3, 1, G star. So click on the geometry. And those are the coordinates of each of the labeled atoms for the molecule in Cartesian space. So it's just X, Y, Z coordinates. So if you want to actually draw the molecules, you can use a simple software like Avogadro. And so in that case, you can actually make the coordinates yourself instead of just looking up from a database. Avogadro is a really useful, simple software um, that can draw things. So you can pick an element and then just click and drag in the geometry that you want. So I'm drawing kind of a really horribly designed butane right here, but Avogadro also comes with uh, some good features so you can actually geometry optimize the structure. So you go up there to extensions and then optimize geometry and it makes in this case a nice little cis butane. Then all you need to do is file save as and make sure it's an XYZ file so you can store the 3D coordinates. So now if I look at that file with a simple text editor, in this case VI, that's this is what you should see. There's the number of atoms at the top and the labeled atoms with the 3D coordinates in the rest of the file. So whether you get the information from the online database or you make the molecule yourself, this file is what you want to end up with, this XYZ structure. Uh, so you can generate an STL 3D printable file. Okay, so now we're going to convert a XYZ file to an STL file, which is suitable for 3D printing, and I'm going to use VMD to build out the XYZ and also render the STL. Here I'm opening VMD with the terminal and opening the XYZ file. You can just use the icon to open it. And you can do file load molecule and pick the molecule, but I just typed it in. And you can modify the graphics of the molecule with graphics and then representations here in this panel. One other thing you don't want to forget is to remove the axes when you actually make the model. Uh, that way you just get your molecule only. And then you go to file render, select STL as the file type and give it a name so now we're almost there and the last thing before being able to run the print is just to repair the STL file so I'm at uh, netfab.azurewebsites.net it's a Microsoft tool for repairing STL files and you just upload your STL and then let it do the repair. Also this tool from Microsoft is very good for editing STL files in general so if you kinda have rough edges on your um, STL 3D model then this might be a really good option for clearing them up without having, having to do detailed changes to the, to the model. Once it's ready, you just click download to get the fixed STL file.
and it appends underscore fixed to the file name so it's a different file name and this is just a preview using some default Mac viewing software for STLs so it looks pretty solid it's not the best software but it's just the, some kind of default so it looks like it works and it's ready to print so basically that is it um, for some printers you might need a uh, a certain slicer software to turn the STL file into G code file, but that's usually not the case for conventional printers, uh, which you're probably used to. So uh, once you get that STL, you can print away. I just make sure that you heed that final note that you should um, always use supports because the 3D complexes are they basically need it. Um, so that's that's all. Thanks for watching guys. Uh, you can thumbs up if you appreciate it and subscribe if you'd like to see more stuff like this. Thanks.